Hello, we are excited and here today with Kanisha. And I would love for you to pronounce your name for me, please. Your last name. Hi, my name is Kanisha McCray. McCray. Awesome. Awesome. So, Miss McCray, if you will, please tell our audience a little bit about yourself before we get started with our wonderful interview. Yes. So I am originally from a small town called Hemingway, South Carolina. I currently live in Columbia, South Carolina as a school-based speech language pathologist. So I've been doing that for almost seven years now. Awesome. Congratulations. Congratulations. And would you like to give a shout out to your undergraduate school? Yes. So I have two to shout out, both HBCU, so Claflin University and also South Carolina State University. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. So we both have that in common. I went to a CU and then I went to a SCSU. Um, it was Clemson University. So um, great thing that you're a bulldog. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. So let's talk about this wonderful book and we're going to show the cover in just a little bit. But before we do that, um, just tell us when did you first realize you wanted to become an author? Um, maybe three or four years ago, probably in the midst of COVID, just kind of on social media. And it seemed like a lot, it was just a good time to start planning or thinking about it. And then I was seeing a lot of authors on Facebook or social media that were becoming authors. So I just wanted to kind of learn a little bit more about that and probably potentially one day become an author myself. Awesome. Awesome. So are there any like authors who really inspired you? Um, just kind of following some of the people that I follow on social media that I that I'm somewhat familiar with and seeing how they were able to become an author, it made it a little bit more realistic to me. Oh, awesome. That's great. I, I can really appreciate that myself because um, I saw people who looked so much like me and it's like, if they can do it, then I can. And I was blessed to have some people who had done it before to take me by their hand and, and kind of guide me through the process. So you probably have a pretty busy schedule like most people. When did you find time to write? Um, so originally, somewhere in the midst of COVID, I first wrote my first manuscript. And then from that point until maybe the summer of 2023, I went back to try to find it, couldn't find it. So I had to start all over again. So I spent some of my summer break since I do work in a school, starting the beginning part of it. And then up until maybe December, just piece by piece, pulling it all together gotcha. whenever I had a break. Yes. And I can certainly relate to those breaks because I have shared before that my writing strategy is any extra minute that I get anywhere, like, okay, I'm in the line waiting for my prescription at CVS and there are five cars in front of me. So I take my phone out and get my notes app out. And that's when I start to add. And sometimes I'm writing down the road dictating, but you use every minute that you have. Some people think that it looks like you just take a whole Saturday morning every mm -hmm. Or once a month or whatever, and that's the only time and the only way you can write. It may work for some people, but that didn't work for me. Mine was just here and there, piecing it together all around the clock. Same. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. So, how did you go about deciding on the topic for your book? So, that part was a little bit easy. So, as a school based speech language pathologist, what I've realized throughout my years of working is a lot of people don't really understand what a speech pathologist does. So, that was one reason why I wanted to write a book that kind of talked about speech. And then also, just my experiences with, with some parents and some kids, they're a little hesitant or afraid of speech therapy or just special education in general. So I wanted to find a way where I can kind of bridge the gap or inform people. And I felt like a book would be the best way to do that. That's amazing. And so I didn't have any firsthand experiences with speech until I think we've had three children in our family to go through speech services. And I've seen the difference and I was able to kind of follow the IEPs and the goals. And I was just completely amazed at how someone with a thrust or an underbite um, who 
maybe just, you know, couldn't get the tongue in the right place and, and, mm -hmm. the, and the seeds were a difficult thing and the, the miracles that the speech um, pathologists were able to work. So kudos to you. I appreciate what you do. Thank you. And I honestly am not familiar with a book similar to yours that actually talks about um, about your career that way. So that's another kudo as well. Because mm -hmm. I did do kind of a search just before I wrote my book to see if something was already out there. Mm -hmm. And there were some books that talked about impairments or disability. And there were some that talked about speech impairments, but none specifically about the career our field of speech. And if they did, it didn't seem like it was catered towards children or elementary or middle school kids. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Well, and I would love the approach that you gave to it, the way it was kind of introduced, um, you know, so I'll let you tell as much of that as you want, but we are not here to do a spoiler and tell everything that the book is about because it is now available um, on Amazon and we want people to go out there and to purchase this um, book because it is a wonderful one. And I love the colorful illustrations. We're going to show the cover in just a little bit, but um, we want you to support this very new author and, um, and, and get the book from Amazon. And in the description for this video, we will have the link for the book and we'll also have author contact information so that if you want to invite her to your school or civic organization, whatever it is that you're having, a book fair, you'll have that information so that you can get in touch with Ms. McCray. All right, so what influenced your actual decision to become an SLP? So it was a couple of things. So. The first one was having received speech myself as a kid, and then also having a family member with special needs who also received speech, and then also just kind of hearing a little bit about it, about the flexibility, and just wanting to learn more about speech. So that was what kind of brought me into the field at the beginning. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So what has been your greatest aha um, moment as an SLP? Did you did you discover something that you just had no idea about? And the good thing, one thing that I love about education, because I'm an educator, is when you're matriculating through school, you get to do these field observations and you get to go spend time with teachers, even before you do your student teacher teaching or your practicum experience where you're out there, you're, you're doing it, but you're still in school. Um, so, you can't ever learn everything about a career before you actually get into the career. So mm -hmm. what, what has been your greatest aha? And you made a really good point because just kind of thinking back to my practicum and observations, I did have that hand-on experience, but I, of course, since I wasn't fully a speech pathologist at the time, it was limited to what I can do versus after I graduated and got a job, then I could see more of a difference. So my first aha moment was something that they told us in graduate school was paperwork, but it's a whole nother level once you're in the field, the level of paperwork. So that was my first aha moment. And then also the significant and the importance of a speech pathologist and how we can impact so many lives, so many children lives. And you have a lot of those aha moments when you're working on whether it's a sound or a language concept, and then the kid can actually produce it or they get so excited because a sound that they weren't able to say for a whole for weeks or months they're now able to see and they not only they're able to say the sound but they actually understand how to correct it what their tongue is supposed to be doing what's going on in their mouth so it's, wow. it's an amazing process to see when they have that little aha moment themselves most definitely, most definitely. So we, I don't think have even shared. And, and so when you pull this video up, you'll see in the thumbnail, of course, the title of the book, but we haven't actually said it in this video. And the, the title is my mom's superpower, but I truly believe that that is a superpower because look at what it did for you. Like who would ever know that you had a speech impediment or you needed speech at some point because your speech is so very perfect um, to me at this point. And like I said, I have seen a child, I've seen a before and after, if you will. And I know that it was, you know, nothing less than a miracle the way it 
boosted the child's self-confidence and just made whatever he basically he said it was just so much more understandable i didn't have to say huh a, a, you know several different times and 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 ask for that so again kudos to you and the work that you're doing um is very is is wonderful thank you all right you're so welcome so do you think this might be a series will you do other books as well i'm not sure hopefully that will be amazing but i'm not sure as of right now Okay. All right. Well, we have to really be excited about the success that this book is going to see and just take our time and market it and get it out there. And who knows, then there may be, because what happened with me, and I had planned to write more, but when I published BJ's Big Dream and I kept reading to children here and there, they would say, but but you just stopped like what happened to bj after that like what else happened um because he he got dressed to go to school the next day did the children like his change did he do anything else differently and so you'll start to get those questions and you'll see how much your book resonates with children and parents and you'll start thinking hmm what else can i do with this and ideas will, will come to you but it will be amazing how many ideas they will give you so that's, yes, I look forward to that. Awesome. That's a great thing. So we've talked several different times about this great book. And so if y'all will just bear with me for just a second, I am going to show you this wonderful cover and um, just let you see what has been in the creative mind of this great author so that um, she has now brought her vision to life. And you're going to be able to see just what she has done with this idea that started in her head. She put it in on paper and she brought it to life with this character. Um, is that showing pretty well? Yes. Okay, great, great. So do you want to just tell us what's going on in the cover with your character and the superhero? Yes, so without trying to give too much information so like the title says my mom's superpower so it follows a boy named ricky on to school where it, his mom is speaking for a career day and just throughout the story his thought process on how he views his mom changes in a magical way all right and so you can definitely see that it looks like he's at school. She shows up in her superhero outfit. And so that should put a lot of questions in readers' minds. And it should let parents know that this book is going to help their students understand another career, a new career that maybe they're not familiar with. But even if they are familiar and they are students who take advantage of speech services at school, maybe they haven't thought that this is something that I could possibly do. Because at what age did you decide, hmm, you know, I, I think I'd enjoy doing that. So for me, I made that decision my senior year of undergrad. So it was like spring semester and I was trying to figure out what am I going to do next? I'm about to graduate in a couple of months. I have to do something. And then we had a class discussion and one of the students were saying how her sister was a speech pathologist. And then in that moment, like shortly after class, I went straight to the dorm room, researched speech pathologist, and then I applied for programs that same summer. So after graduation, I thankfully was able to get accepted into South Carolina State University where I was able to get my master's in speech. But Really, it was like the last minute, senior year. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's awesome. That reminds me of the epiphany that I had. I knew from the time that I was in third or fourth grade, really, I started teaching children in my neighborhood in second grade. But by fourth grade, it was pretty much solidified in my mind. I am going to be a teacher. But it wasn't until I got to high school and I was in an English class. Um, it was in, I took honors English. I can't remember honestly if it was 10th grade, 11th grade. It was between the two. And I heard another student say, I am going to major in English. And I had never thought about being able to teach English all day. I just assumed I would teach elementary school. But when she said that, it turned on a light bulb in my head, like, 
you don't really care for science and math. And I mean, they're okay, but to have to teach them, you really need to enjoy them. But I loved English so much more than any of the other subjects. And so then it started, I started thinking to do that all day, every day, I would truly love that. And I would also enjoy teaching high school students or middle school students. So that was the light bulb. It's funny how somebody else can help us see what it is that's been there all that time, but just hearing from them, it kind of brings it out. So parents, I'm saying to you, exposure, like your children have to hear about these careers and know. And, so, and the SLP is not the only career that's mentioned here because there were other careers that are mentioned in the book as well. So when did you decide that it, you wanted to do it for the school? Because I know that speech pathologists have many different pathways and there are opportunities in many different um, areas or you don't have to work for the school system. But mm -hmm. what made you want to contribute to children? Well, I have a passion for working with children, more specifically five and under they have my heart a little bit more, but just feeling like that's where I could do the biggest impact. And when I received speech, it was in the elementary level, maybe like pre-K or kindergarten. So that was kind of the driving force for going into school and more so with a focus with elementary to try to give those kids that I work with that same positive impact that I received. Wow. Well, that is wonderful. And that's another um, aha point for parents and for just, you know, people in the community that early intervention is huge. Um, and it's, it's great when you can work with a child who is that young. And I know my, my family's personal goal was for our child to be out of speech by middle school because we really wanted um, his self-esteem to improve and for him to feel really good because middle school is a whole nother other. Um, it's, you know, bullying and um, kids picking on kids. It happens very young, but the older children get, the more they become withdrawn if there's something that kind of separates them or makes them stand out and children make fun of them. That doesn't always happen. So don't think that I'm saying that if you have a child in middle school or high school, they shouldn't be going to speech. I'm not saying that at all, but it's possible that if you start early enough and there are goals that are obtainable, then, you know, it's possible that if you get it corrected when they're as young as possible, then they, they have more self-esteem to read out loud in school, to ask questions, to talk, and to just, you know, feel, feel good about themselves or feel better about themselves so that they're not drawing any attention, you know, that they don't want to themselves. So... Early intervention is basically what I'm pushing here, but that's admirable that you're working with very young children. And two, you know, sometimes when your child is in your home, you just basically think that whatever they do is just, is them and, and that's the way they are and it's okay. But when they start to go to, to school, educators start to notice things that perhaps sometimes parents who love them and, and are very much in their lives don't necessarily realize. And they're able to say, hmm, this is something that we can really help you on. And so parents don't be afraid to take that um, help and, and get started early with it because again, you can have um, you know your child doing a whole lot better and excelling in ways that you never thought. And it's not to hold your child back, is to catapult them or to kind of forge them ahead. Yes, and those were some of the points that I was thinking of when I wrote this book to try to empower and inform not just parents, but also the students that might receive speech currently or might need to in the future so that they have a better understanding of the process. And like you mentioned earlier, depending, every child is different, but the goal is always to get them what they need so that they can be in the general ed in their classroom with their same age peers as much as possible. So at the beginning where I'm first placing a kid into speech, I'm also talking about what the goal is and the goal is always to graduate. So the goal is for them to get what they need, for them to get the strategies, techniques, the confidence, whatever they might need 
and then eventually push them back into the classroom as soon as possible because we do not like to pull students just because it's more so we're here to help to kind of give them that extra support that they need until they no longer need it. Awesome. Awesome. Again, kudos. Thank you for the work that you do. And thank you for this great contribution. Um, and this book is, you know, we've made it sound like it's quite educational, which it is. But I do want our audience to know that it's a really cute story that can resonate with children because the situation that Ricky is in, um, he, he gets very anxious. He is nervous about an upcoming day. And I'm not going to share many details, but I just want you to know that it is a story, again, that children can resonate with. And one of the questions you can ask them before you read it to them or as you read it is just, have you ever gone to school and had butterflies in your stomach? Have you ever been uh, um, just a little anxious or nervous about something that's going to happen? And they can somewhat understand the way Ricky feels about this upcoming day. And they can see how the story climaxes and then resolves at the end. But just it's a beautifully written story. It's beautifully told. The illustrations are amazing. And so we truly recommend this book. It is on Amazon. And um, would you like to share, if you will, your uh, email address so that if there are people who want to contact you to come to their school and share your book or in their community organization, or maybe there's a library or media specialist who's watching and um, wants to get the book in her, on her library shelf. Yes, that would be great. So I'm going to share my business email address. So I do also have a private practice where I more so specialize with that early intervention, like you were mentioning earlier. So usually three and under, and sometimes five and under. So my email address is cocospeech at gmail.com. I'll also spell it. So C-O-C-O-S-S-P-E-E-C-H at gmail.com. Awesome. Awesome. Well, this has been a fantastic interview because we have a fan fantastic author who has a fantastic new book. And so is there anything else that you would like to share before we um, leave? Anything that I have not covered or anything that you thought of as we were talking this evening? Yes. So one thing that I would like to share is even though it's a children's book, it's meant for all ages. So adults, elementary, middle, high school, even college. And then it also is very diverse and it's also very friendly to all backgrounds as well. So I, that was one of the things that I wanted to add in my book so that everyone felt like they were represented. So this book shows that and it has that. Awesome. I'm so glad you you said that because I see a, a purpose for your book that I hadn't seen before. I know that sometimes when things are new for families, a book might be recommended to that family. And so maybe there's a family and, you know, it's recommended that the child go into speech and they're saying, no, there's no way. And, and, and so they're really afraid of what's going to happen to the child. The child is afraid to be pulled out. And so just maybe this book can give them some confidence and, and help them and just help them see, you know, exactly what this is all about. So yep. I hadn't thought about it in that light, but but I appreciate your response to that. All right. Well, thank you again and best wishes to you. I just know that this is going to be a great seller because I see so many wonderful purposes for this book. And I just can't wait to hear that you have thought of that second book because I just believe that this is some kind of way going to be a, a sequel that we may not hear specifically from Ricky again, but maybe one of his classmates or one of his siblings, there's going to be more to come. So thank you. And again, I wish for you the very best and I appreciate your time this evening for this interview. Yes, and thank you for helping me throughout this journey. Oh, you're so welcome. You have been wonderful to work with and I appreciate your uh, having or, or bringing Hadassah's Crown Publishing along with you on your journey. All right. Thanks again. And thank you, audience. We appreciate you continuing to support our YouTube channel. If you will please like this video, share it and subscribe. We will be back more with more content. And we just ask that you continue to follow us. Thank you again.